Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk a lot about mid-jungle in Season 14. I'm going to talk about what I think the strongest mid-jungle combinations are. I'm going to explain the different types of jungles and I'm also going to talk about what pairings I think are best with the uh, strongest meta champs. This is my tier list uh, for mid lane from a couple days ago and I will talk about especially some of the top champs up here um, and which jungle should they be paired with. So the first thing to think about when you're picking with mid-jungle, there's two big things. The first is damage balance. So ideally you do want to play different damage types in your mid jungle. So if you have an AD jungler like Graves, you would want to play an AP mid laner. That's the general rule. Um, and same thing with AP. If you have an AP jungler like Lilia or Carpenter or whatever, you probably want to play an AD mid. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It's so it's harder to itemize against you in the mid jungle. If you're playing double AD, it's very easy for your opponents to buy like a cloth armor. Um, or if you're against some bruiser, they can buy like steel caps. They might even go Zonius later in the game. Um, and it works the same way for AP, except it's even worse because the magic pen options are much more limited. So if you're playing a double AP mid jungle, like let's say you're playing like Evelyn Syndra, it's really easy for your enemies to go Merc Treads and to get a lot of MR early. So if you can, you want to avoid going the same damage type in mid jungle. Now, if it's going to end your matchup, right? Like if you're just going to pick a losing lane for it um, to have a different damage type, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd prioritize your matchup a bit higher, but that's one thing you want to stay away from. The second thing you want to think about is trying to have a combination of damage and CC. Generally, you don't want to be too high on either, and you also don't want to be lacking either. So an example would be something like Lee Sin, right? Lee Sin brings a lot of damage, and so is generally really well paired with Miz that have a lot of CC. So something like a Lissandra um, or an Ari or something like that. Something that can bring guaranteed lockdown, Rise is another one, because Lee Sin will bring all the damage, right? It's generally not good if you pick two very high damage champs without CC together because, well, you have a lot of damage, but you don't have the CC for it. The same way works if, if you go for full CC. So a champ like Sejuani, maybe that brings a lot of CC, but doesn't bring a lot of damage. You wouldn't want to play something like Lissandra alongside it because Lissandra also brings CC and no damage. So generally, you want to look at your jungle um, as a mid laner and be like, OK, you know, do we need damage or CC? Um, and you might find that they actually bring both, right? Like if you play with a champion like Xin Zhao, Xin Zhao kind of already has you covered with both damage and CC. So you can essentially just pick whatever you want. You could pick more damage, you could pick more CC, um, or you could bring a champ that brings both, right? Like a champion like LeBlanc brings both as well. The just, again, the main thing is to really avoid, like you wouldn't want to play champs with no CC uh, with other champs with no CC. Like if you were playing, I don't know, something like, um what's a good example here like something like aurelian soul you know aurelian soul is bringing purely damage um if you play like aurelian soul lee sin i would say that's a very weak mid jungle now there is an argument maybe that lee can like carry you through the early game uh, but you'd much better off be playing with something like a vi or a volley or a zin Zhao because they will bring the cc um as well as some damage and you can bring that damage of your own so those are really to kind of reiterate those are the two things you need to think about just making sure you have a different damage balance in your mid jungle try not to play double ad or double ap um, and try and make sure you have a combination of both damage and CC. Now I'm going to explain the various types of junglers and what types of mid laners you'd want to pair with them. So I haven't ranked literally every jungler in the game in here. I just put some of the meta ones I could think of, uh, but you should get the idea. So the first is tempo junglers. So tempo junglers are champs that clear pretty quickly, but also want to push into the enemy jungle. So normally tempo junglers, they want mid priority and they also want CC a lot of the time. So like if you're playing with a champ like Graves, for example, like what's really good with Graves? Something that can push and move is great. So like an Ari or a Karma are really good champs um, with Graves. Syndra can also be quite good because again, Syndra does pick, uh, does bring some CC. There are kind of weaker mid jungle combinations with this. You know, like you could play something like Talia that does get pushed over the wave, but Talia's CC is kind of it, normally like Talia wants to set up off someone else. So I'd say Talia Graves is not really like a great combination, right? And stuff you'd really want to avoid playing with Graves would be things that aren't going to get priority on their own and are kind of reliant on ganks. Like if you play something like Silas with Graves, for example, Graves is not the kind of champ that can spend all the time ganking your lane. So something like Silas Graves would be a kind of poor combination. So yeah, it pretty much goes for all these tempo junglers. Like ideally you want push plus CC. So with Nidalee, for example, um, something like Renekton obviously is very good or Pantheon because these champs are very strong 1v1. They've got guaranteed CC and they're almost always going to get priority in their lanes. If you did want to play an AP champ with those, you probably want, again, something like an Aria or a Karma that brings both CC and damage. Again, if you can avoid the same damage type mid jungle, you should. But the priority is the main thing, just being able to get push, making sure that these these junglers are both safe in their own jungle and also able to invade into the enemy jungle. Next, we have ganking junglers. So these are probably the easiest to pick with because most of them most of them bring damage and CC just on their own. So a ganking jungler, there's a couple different ways you can pick with them. So one is you can use a ganking jungler to allow you to pick very greedily. 
Um, so you could take a champion like Victor, right? Like a champion like Victor uh, does not really bring much to the early game. Really, all you bring is just domination in lane, right? Like you don't bring a whole lot of damage. You don't bring a lot of CC. Um, now you do scale really well. So I guess one way you can pick with these champions is you can be like, okay, well, because I have one of these champs, I'm allowed to scale a bit more greedily because they can carry the early game. Now, personally, when I see a ganking jungler, I try and pick something that is going to be able to set up ganks for them. So um, that can depend a little bit on which jungler they pick. So if, again, if you have something like Lee Sin that doesn't bring any CC, you probably want to play something like Rise or LeBlanc or Ari. Like you really want to make sure that you have guaranteed CC. Um, if they're bringing both the damage and the CC, so something like Jarvan, you can go something like Ori. So Ori doesn't really have much CC of her own, but she does deal a lot of damage. So something like Jarvan Ori is a really good combination. Um, and the rest of these, you know, stuff like Zinzal Viego, um, Vi and Volibear, they do have specific pairings that can be quite good, like Vi Ari or Vi Syndra are really good, because the lockdown and point and click is super, super effective. But honestly, you could pick pretty much any mid laner with these, and it would be really, really strong. Anything that can look to set up ganks, um, anything that can look to skirmish early is ideal, but if you do want to play something that's a bit more scaling, you can look for that. Next is farming junglers, and farming junglers I think are the most difficult to pick with. So the thing with farming junglers is they are very, very greedy, and there are a lot of different farming junglers in the game. I could have probably put more on here, you know, stuff like Yi as well. These junglers are generally ones that aren't often strong enough to invade the enemy jungle. They can sometimes, you know, depending on jungle matchup, obviously, but most of the time, farming jungles just want to put their camps on cooldown over and over and just kind of out, out scale, I guess, the opponent, right? Like normally if you get into mid game with one of these champs and they're, they're very farmed, they're going to take over the game. But the difficult thing of playing with the farming jungle is that you basically won't expect to receive any ganks in the early game, right? Like they're not really going to help you. They're going to be able to assist you in any, any way. So when you're picking with these champs, you really want something that's going to be very self-sufficient. Um, so one I, I always like to pick is something like Ari. Um, again, you can go Karma. And the thing is like while these champs do benefit from receiving ganks, right? Um, they're not reliant on receiving ganks to function in the game. This can be different from a champion like LeBlanc, right? LeBlanc generally loses her lanes without jungle intervention, right? Like LeBlanc, a lot of LeBlanc's strength lies in her in her gank setup. Whereas while champs like Karma and Ari, um, sorry, Karma and Ari do have gank setup, they're not reliant on that, right? Like ultimately Ari can scale in the mid game, she is good to neutralize her, uh, and Karma can just become a, a very good utility champ and even a poke champ. Whereas LeBlanc, you're expected to lose 1v1, unless you're versus melee maybe, uh, but you're expected to lose most of your range matchups without receiving jungle ganks. So you really would not want to play something, again, like a LeBlanc or a Silas that is going to be reliant on receiving jungle ganks with one of these, and you instead want to play something that is going to be um, very, yeah, very neutralizable, I guess, and you're doing so knowing that, like, you're unlikely to receive help. It's possible that you do, right? Like, sometimes Karthus ganks with Exhaust. Sometimes uh, Echo can look for a 3-camp mid. But don't rely on it, right? So again, I find these champs quite hard to pick with. Um, the the general like safer picks with them are stuff like Ari Karma. Um, if you want a safer AD, I think like Zed's not bad because he does have like he can farm from range and he has a dash. Um, Phase Rush Jace can be made to work. I think Tristana, while she is safe, it kind of needs it doesn't need to snowball, but definitely likes to snowball. So yeah, those are options you can think about. But personally, as a mid laner, it is hard to farm or it is hard to play with a farming jungler. And the last type of jungle are level 6 junglers, so there's probably a lot more of these as well. Um, again, I haven't raided literally every jungler, you know, there's stuff like Gragas and Ivor and stuff that you could definitely put on here, you know, at least in the ganking. Uh, but okay, level 6 junglers in particular. So these are ones that are most likely not going to look to impact the map too much pre-6, but post-6 want to get really, really active. So normally with these champs, you want to play something again that is kind of like self-sufficient pre-6, um, and if possible, can like defend your jungler pre-6 as well. So like a really good example would be if you play with something like Nocturne, um, you can go for something like Gallio, right? That means that at level six, you've got this big you know, spike between you. And also Gallio can carry any like pre-six fights. So I think Gallio Nocturne is a pretty good combo. Now, could you play something like, again, Aria or Karma with Nocturne? Yeah, I think you could. Uh, the main champs to avoid when you're playing with something like a Nocturne is something that is kind of like reliant, again, on very early game um help or is like needs to fight a lot in the early game or maybe something that just like doesn't really want to fight at six anyway like i can see something like azir nocturne being quite weird like nocturne and azir like I, I guess have good gank set up at level six but it doesn't feel like they complement each other very well you know it feels like azir kind of wants to pressure pretty hard throughout the whole lane and nocturne's not really going to be able to assist that and then at six you know nocturne wants to look for a lot of skirmishes and like 
Azir wants to look for ganks, but doesn't really want to look for skirmishes, you know? So when you're playing with these level 6 junglers, again, I like to pick something that also spikes at level 6, and then you can kind of play for that together. If you don't, though, just make sure you're picking something that uh, is going to be able to get to level 6 without, you know, getting too hard pressured. Again, don't be relying on ganks coming from these champs in the very early game. So with that all out of the way, what I'll do is I'll talk about some of these stronger mid-jungle pairings with a lot of these champs up here. So first one is Ari. I mean, Ari can be paired with just about anything and will be fine. I think it's ideal if you have a jungler that brings damage and entity as well. Like, I think if you're Ari and you play with any of these, you're going to be in a really good spot. Ari Vi is, is one of the best combos in the game because, again, that point-and-click lockdown and the ability to follow up from the Ari side is super, super nice. Um, but ultimately, like, Ari is one of the best champs at playing with just about anything, so it's it's going to be fine. Now, Azir, Azir is best with tankier frontline junglers. So Azir is quite good with um, Poppy. He's quite good with Volley. He can be quite good with Zinzao. Um, basically, you don't really want to play Azir with pretty much anything that's not a ganking jungler. Um, I, I think a deal with tempo junglers is not that great. Like you do get prior, but like ultimately you don't really want to spend your time helping them. Like you can play a zero graves and that's fine, but really you're looking for like a ganking jungler. Um, yeah, again, stuff like Poppy, things that will bring CC. They don't necessarily have to bring damage, but you want CC in frontline as a zero. So that's ideal. Um, with a champ like Jace, I think that, well, obviously we want an AP jungler if possible, but of the AP junglers, I mean, Pretty much any AP jungler will do because Jace is fairly self-sufficient. It is a bonus if they have some sort of CC. You know, like, you can play, say, Jace in Italy, but and while it's good for poking, you need to have CC in the other lanes then. You know, like, if you have a Renekton top and a Nautilus bar, that's probably a fine pairing because Nidalee has something to play towards in the early game. You can probably get Pry on your lane, and then you can play for poke in the mid game. But I think in the, you know, it just in terms of mid 2v2, like, that wouldn't be very strong, and so you would prefer to play something with uh, maybe like a Talia, something that has a bit of CC on its own, or you can even play something off meta, like an Elise, you know, something that will bring that CC. Um, yeah, so just again, AP jungler if possible, the more CC the better, but again, Jace can kind of get away with a lot of stuff. Karma, so Karma also is pretty, you know, well-rounded and can play with most things. Um, I guess what you'd want to ideally avoid is double APs with, with Karma, like I think Karma plus Evelyn or Karma plus Lilia in Italy, those all feel pretty mediocre, you know, same with Karma with Karthus. I think both, you know, Karma deals a lot of damage, so, like, normally normally you want to be the solo AP if you can. It's not required, but it just feels bad for both of you. I think Karma with, you know, AD farming or level 6 jungler is okay, but really Karma wants, like, either a ganking jungle or an AD tempo jungler. Something like a Graves um, or a Kindred could be quite good. Uh, but, yeah, like, you just want to avoid some of those AP picks, pretty much. Way... Hui is kind of interesting. I mean, Hui kind of wants the ability to pressure his lane a lot, and I think it's kind of nice if you do have CC from your jungler. Even though you have some CC of your own, it's it's just a lot easier for Hui if he can make sure his ult is guaranteed by someone else in a fight. So I really like Hui with uh, ganking junglers in particular. Can you play Hui with a tempo jungler? I would say, honestly, not that well. Like, if you play Hui Grays or Hui Kindred, in my mind, that's not great. Like, you do have push and you do have a strong lane, um, but I feel like the CC that you bring is not as reliable. Um, and I think, like, do you want to play Hui with a farming jungler? Ideally, no. I think you are very immobile early, so you kind of want help. And also, like, you should be pressuring your lane a lot, so it'd be nice if you could receive dives. Um, so I'd probably avoid Hui with farming or level 6 junglers, but gank junglers are ideal. Tempo junglers are probably fine. Um, Syndra? So Syndra brings damage and CC, which means that she can be played with most champs. I think, again... Um, Syndra is quite good with ganking junglers. She is pretty good with both Graves and Kindred. Again, like AD tempo junglers are quite good. Um, I think you can play her fine with like Nocturne, right? Like at level six, that's very, very scary. Just be bear in mind, I guess, that like you might have to be careful before that. Um, I, I think Syndra with farming junglers is okay if the enemy team also has a farming jungler. That's something else you might want to think about. Is like, you know, if your team is say Syndra, Kane, Milio, right? Like you're not expecting Kane and Milio to help mid at all. And that could be a problem if you're up against, like, Jarvan and Leona as, as the enemy team's jungle system. But if you're up against, I don't know, the enemy team has, say, um, Lilia and Janna, like, you're not really expecting to get ganked, right? So, like, ideally, you wouldn't play with a farming jungler, but it's probably fine if you if you know the enemy team doesn't have a ton of threat onto you either. Um, Ori? Ori ideally wants CC from her jungle. It's not required because, like, Ori can just play utility later in the game, like, shield ADCs and look to kill people and stuff. Uh, but I think it is best if you pair it with a ganking jungler. Um, I think it makes your 2v2 a lot stronger. Now, there are, again, certain combos that are really good. I think Ori Nocturne is great. Ori Jaren is great. Ori Vi is great. 
So those are like, you know, stuff that is really good to look for. But again, any any gank jungler, anything that brings CC is going to be quite nice. Akali. So Akali, it's pretty important which jungler you get. Um, I see a lot of the time people just are picking, are picking Akali into a certain matchup or whatever, but then they have like a very bad uh, jungler to go with it. So Akali is a champ that, at least against ranged champs, is, is tending to get pushed in. And if the ranged champ doesn't feel threatened by your jungler, then they're going to bully you a lot. And it's going to prevent you from getting the skirmishes to begin with. So Akali is really reliant on having a ganking jungler. You really don't want to play Akali with a tempo jungler because you are not going to be able to get prior and you're not going to be able to receive ganks. You also do not want to play Akali with a farming jungle um because again you're not going to receive any help could you play akali with a level six jungler you maybe could i would say again try avoid it like you really want something that can pressure your lane allow you to snowball that is able to just take fights really often um just get you to level six and then you can kind of carry from there so i think especially cc ad junglers like maybe lee sin isn't the best but it's playable but you know something else that can really like carry your early game that looks really good leblanc LeBlanc, again, really wants uh, AD ganking junglers. Now, you can play with tempo junglers depending on the matchup. So, like, something I do a lot is I pick LeBlanc into matchups like Kiana or Fizz. And the thing is, like, LeBlanc will get prior in these matchups. So, if you're getting prior in your matchups, it's fine to play with something like a Graves or a Kindred because you will bring all the CC. Um, they can bring bonus damage, but you're going to get prior anyway. If you're playing something like LeBlanc versus Syndra, though, you do not want to play with a tempo jungler because you're not going to be able to get prior in your 1v1. Then you'd really want to play with something like, you know, uh, you know, any of these pretty much. Something that is going to threaten um, your lane and allow you to set up ganks on them. So obviously it is matchup dependent, right? Like the easier matchup you get, um, the less your jungle matchup matters. But ideally, again, pair it with a ganking jungler. Talia has specific combos that are great. So like Talia with Volley Bear, for example, is really, really good. Talia with Rek'Sai, you know, any sort of guaranteed lockdown is really good. Can you make it work with a tempo jungler? If you can get prior on your 1v1, I would say yes. Uh, I don't think it's amazing though. And I think again, you know, really works well with uh, ganking junglers. Tristana. Tristana has a lot of options. You can play Tristana in a couple different ways, right? Like you can play this champ just to scale. And in that sense, like she can be good with farming junglers, right? Like Tristana Karthus at six has a lot of pressure. Um, and normally you will be able to get pushed over the lane. She can usually defend your jungler and you have a dash. So like if you're playing Tristana with Karthus, you need to realize that your game plan, instead of being able to snowball your lane 1v1, is kind of to play to make sure your jungler is getting through the game in like a good state, right? And then when Karthus is on the map ready to pressure, maybe you're level six or whatever, that's the point where you can start to get aggro, right? But before then, you you wouldn't really be able to do so, right? Like you wouldn't want to play Tristana with Karthus the same way you might play Tristana with like... Um, I don't know, an Elise or something, right? Something that is going to pressure a lot early. Um, obviously, Tristana does work with uh, gang junglers. I think with tempo junglers, can work too, just because Tristana gets a lot of priors. So Tristana is a really good AD pick, you know, similar to Jace, for being able to pair with a lot of different jungles. Um, and it's really nice as well that you have good mobility. It's just your play style with the champ needs to change. Like, you need to realize that if you are playing with something a little greedier, you're going to have to play your lane a little safer. And last one is Nico. So Nico brings damage in CC and a lot of prior in basically any matchup, which means she can be played with just about ev anything and everything. Um, I I'd say the only things you really want to avoid with Nico is doubling up on AP. Like, is it fine to play with a level six jungler? Yes, but I probably wouldn't play Nico with like Evelyn or Fiddle because you know the Merc Treads and Banshee's value is too high. Kind of same with this. Like, could you play Nico with Kane? I would say yes. Like, obviously, I'd prefer to play with the Ganking jungler, but you can make it work. Uh, but I think playing Nico with something like Karthus or Echo is, again, it's giving them like Merc Treads value that's just way too high. So be very, very careful of that. Um, so I think that's pretty much going to be it. You know, I could go through literally every champ and, and talk about them, but I think it'd end up being way too long a video. The main things, again, to remember is that ideally you want to play a different damage type. Ideally, you want to make sure that you have a good balance of both damage and CC or just a ton of both. Like that works too um and then you know you really just need to remember like what kind of mids go with what types of junglers so tempo junglers are generally reliant on having push from mid cc if possible ganking junglers can be played with just about anything mid but ideally if you have some sort of way to kind of um kind of play with them like some cc or damage of your own or the willingness to skirmish can be good that being said you can play scaling picks with these and it'll be fine farming junglers generally you just need to play something that's going to be self-sufficient something that can neutralize or something that has a dash to get out of danger and more importantly something that isn't reliant on receiving ganks that's the main thing is you don't want to play a champ or a matchup that is reliant on jungle intervention because you're never going to get it um finding the level six junglers i like to pair them with level six bikers of my own so again stuff like gallery with nocturne um you could play something like um you know zed with evelyn is quite good 
Um, I want to say any AD mid is pretty good with everyone. And then, yeah, like you could play some pretty much any AD spiker with these sorts of champs. But the main thing I think is just to not double up on the damage thing here. Like even though Lissandra is a level six spiker, you wouldn't want to play Lissandra with a Moomoo or Fiddle because there would be too much overlap and it would be too easy for them just to build Mercs. And there's not a lot of damage. There's only CC. So hopefully that kind of clears things up for you. Um, I will quickly say that there are certain, there are just certain combos that sort of break the rules. So something would be like Diana Yasuo, right? Like Diana Yasuo is a very unique combo in that it's pretty much going to do nothing early game, but then like in team fights and stuff, it's going to be super strong. And that's just a unique combo with how it works. It's kind of the same thing with like Talia Pantheon or um, Talia Renekton is those are just very specific combos. But I think it's just more important to understand what the overall um, goal is for picking your mid jungle. And hopefully after seeing this video, you guys kind of understand that. So yeah, that'll be everything. Um, if you guys have more questions, just comment them in the comment section below. Again, I didn't want to make this video super long. Uh, you can also come to my stream, twitch.tv slash shocklow, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on the jungle. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.